What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we are going to talk about Sedona. So if you guys are excited to hear about Sedona and discover Sedona, I'll give some opinions on Sedona and also do some things to do and just browse around the web showing you the resources and the places that I like to go. So if you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe to Living in Arizona. We talk about many different things, as you can see. I've also created some playlists to organize some of the content. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of the beauty of Sedona here on Instagram, Live in Arizona. That's our new Instagram. So Live in Arizona. This is a picture of Sedona. Look at that, with the rainbow. It's kinda, I come from Hawaii, so I'm big on uh, seeing these kinda beautiful scenery out there in Kauai and Maui, you get to see rainbows and Big Island, but this here happens in Sedona and all across Arizona actually. So you can also follow us over there. So if you're looking to move to or move there or visit Sedona, you can check out the visitor's website, visitsedona.com. They have a lot of great information. Sedona is called the Red Rock Country. The reason it's called the Red Rock Country is for obvious reasons. The sandstone is red and it it's just beautiful I mean that's it's at the foothills just before you go up into Oak Creek Canyon and head towards Flagstaff and just outside to the south of the Verde Valley so these sandstones are something that's almost out of this world they've compared Sedona to Tibet uh, in the sense that it's spiritually enlightening to be there if you're a metaphysical person and you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, it For me, it's just the beautiful scenery. I don't know if there's any magic that really takes place there. I don't think if you go there that you're gonna have, you know, some magical ability that's gonna make you superhuman. But some people, they move there for this magic of Sedona, right? And um, if you wanna know more about it, we'll go ahead and talk about this. So it's in Coconino, Coconino and Yavapai County right here. You can see this little area right here right along the Oak Creek, okay? There's also the Verde Valley in the area. Now, um, he, Sedona was named after Sedona Arabella Miller Schneebly, the wife of Theodore Carl, Carlton Schneebly, the world's first postmaster, or the city's first postmaster who was celebrated for her hospitality and industriousness. Her mother, Amanda Miller, claimed to have made the name up because it sounded pretty. So the city is named after Sedona Arabella Miller Schneebly. She was a postmaster, the first postmaster in the area. This was way back in 1800s, late turn of the century, right? And her mother made it up. So Sedona just is a made up name that her mother gave her. Now the city, the, the census for Sedona is about 10,031. I'd imagine since 2010 census, it's gone up probably about maybe to 15,000. Sedona is kind of growing. It's one of those areas that you don't really want to see it get too overpopulated, but you could totally see that happening. Um, and it's it's got this art scene and it's very amazing. As it says, the formations appear to glow in brilliant orange and red when illuminated by the rising or setting sun. So. Just imagine those red rocks when the sun is coming up and the sun is going down. Then in the afternoon, especially on like a spring day, it doesn't get any better anywhere on earth where you can just have a spring afternoon in Sedona. That's how beautiful it is. And then it obviously looks pretty nice when it snows. I think we even posted this. This is from Sedona in the snow right here. So doesn't that look nice? See how it illuminates? So yeah. Um, let's see, 15 things you can do in Sedona. So when you're over there, what are you going to do, right? Well, you can see it's close to Antelope Canyon. It's not terribly close, but it's not terribly far. Antelope Canyon is that where Horseshoe Bend is. That's over there by the Grand Canyon, maybe about an hour and a half to two hours. People take these pink Jeep tours. Also, not too far away from the Grand Canyon, maybe about an hour and a half away from the Grand Canyon. This church is very famous. It's built in between the red rocks like that. People like that. They take uh, helicopter tours. The thing about helicopter tours that I don't like is when helicopters are buzzing all around the town and I'm just trying to relax in serenity and all I hear is 
these loud helicopters flying around. I mean, they did that in Hawaii too. But um, let's go ahead and take a look at the top attractions. So Cathedral Rock, this is on TripAdvisor if you guys want to check it out. Cathedral Rock is just this amazing rock formation that just looks kind of unique. Kind of like what you would see in Zion National Park in Utah. Look at the view there, right? So people like that. Many different angles of Cathedral Rock for you to explore. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look at the scenic byway. So this is just a road that you can take. That's State Route 179. That kind of speaks for itself, right? Then you have Broken Arrow Trail, which you can see this Jeep is transiting the trail. Most of, most of the stuff that people really get excited about is just general tourist sightseeing stuff. This isn't maybe stuff that locals would do, but um, they probably go on trails, but not the ones that all the tourists go on, right? Bell Rock, just another beautiful rock formation out there. And then you have Oak Creek Canyon. Oak Creek Canyon's where that slide rock is. If you guys haven't ever seen slide rock, that's a place where it's a, it's a natural rock slide. So if you like going down natural rock slides, <laughs> natural water parks, just be careful out there because you can slip. I've, I've, I've known people who slip out there and it sucks. You don't want to slip because that the, the same thing that makes the rock slippery, the fact that it's, you know, carved out so, uh, over the years, soft or uh, smooth gran or sandstone, algae starts to grow on there and that's what makes it so slick. But the thing is, on top of falling, it also gets uh, algae and, and, and dangerous bacteria in the water out there because so many people go over there. Who knows how many kids are peeing and doing whatever they want in the water over there, right? So that's kind of been two things to consider. This Devil's Bridge is a popular place for people to go to take, um, what is it, Instagram photos. Bear Mountain Trail, that's another popular place. As you can see, they've got some uh, Buddhist stuff over here. You know, the Buddhists from all over the world are these neo-Buddhists, right? These people who are New Age Buddhists. They, they've brought their um, beliefs to Sedona. So you have that Stupa Peace Park. Stupa and Peace Park. I cannot say that first word. Doe Mountain Trail. And obviously, as we mentioned before, the International Gallery of Art is really popular there. Also, um, when I when I was here, okay, so this this visitsedona.com is really uh, the resource that you're wanna, gonna want to go to if you're gonna um, consider visiting there, right? So they've got a hundred things to do. This is a little bit more drilled down than the. TripAdvisor uh, listings. So you got bed and breakfast, itineraries, very touristy spot, Sedona. If you're if you're a local and you want to get to know Sedona, you're gonna. The thing that I really liked about Sedona is the weather, especially even in the winter. I, I like the fact if it's gonna get cold, it might as well snow. So the fact that it does snow in Sedona. Is exciting for me because like I said if it's gonna get below 32 degrees it might as well snow and it does happen in Sedona and it creates this awesome ambiance especially during Christmas so I would say Sedona gets four seasons also the fact that grapes are growing there and they have this wine country just outside of Sedona making it like a Sonoma or Napa Valley of Arizona I think that's kind of nice it's it's been growing over time I mean it, it was uh, it took a while for Sedona to really pick up in population and grow infrastructure, but over the last 10 years, it's really taken off and people are moving there for the for this magical experience. And not just that, even beyond the new age stuff, just the, the beauty of the land, just being in that area, waking up in the morning, drinking a cup of coffee, walking out on your porch and looking left at the sunrise or in the evening, looking right and watching the sunset. And that's really what it's all about in Sedona on that those red sandstone rocks. And Sedona is known around the world for that. And hiking and just going down there and walking around the Arts Village. It does get a little bit old. It's it's more of a it's more of a town for older people. If you're 
35 and above, you'll probably enjoy the lifestyle of Sedona. If you're 35 and under, you might get bored pretty dang quick because it's not a party city. It's a place where people wake up early and go to bed early. It's not a place where people stay up till all hours of the night to go hang out. So this is an outdoor environment, outdoor type of city. So that's the big thing with Sedona. I really enjoy Sedona. I recommend it. I think it's, I think it's up there in terms of all things. I mean, the, the housing costs in Sedona are expensive though. That That's something to consider. But would I live in Sedona? Yes. Is it too expensive for me to live in Sedona? Yes. So I want I would like to live there, but it's too expensive. But that's also kind of a good thing because it helps keep Sedona small. If it was really affordable and cheap, then everyone would start moving there because they're like, hey, I want to live in this beautiful place. I mean, why would you want to live where there's nothing, nothing is nothing to see and look at that's so scenic when you could live in Sedona if it was the same price. So that's something to consider. So where to stay staying in Sedona when you take a, take the highway, if you're not spending the night or better still say several nights, you're only running. Okay, whatever. They, the way these people talk on their websites sort of funny. Um, in the area, you can also go to places like Jerome, Cornville, Clarkdale, Camp Verde, the Verde River, those are areas in the in, in, nearby. If you guys want, I can do a video on this place called Jerome. Jerome, Arizona is actually, let me see if I can find it on TripAdvisor. Jerome. This place right here is is up and coming. It's a ghost town. And I should, it, it's worthy of a, actually I just need to take a camera up there and just walk around. But this is an old ghost town. It's called Jerome. If you haven't ever heard of Jerome, you might want to take a look at this place, but it's when I used to go to Jerome 20 years ago, it was there was nothing there. I mean, you just walk along this this road and that was it. And you'd go into like a haunted house and pretty much that's all she wrote. You can see the view out here towards Sedona, towards the Red Rocks. It's up on this mountain that you got to climb this road coming out of was it Clarkdale along the Verde River. Um, but it's up and coming. People like to go to this place just to check it out. It's one of those places when you go to Arizona, check out Jerome. Or if you go to Sedona, check out Jerome. I can make a video more in detail about this, but I really need to go up there with my camera and walk around so you can see what this place is all, all about. But this is something within striking distance to Sedona. I would say you need two days in Sedona, that's it. I don't think you need to spend a full week in Sedona unless you're looking to move there. It's not. There's not that much to do. You know, you hike around a little bit, you drink your coffee, you wake up to a couple mornings and watch a couple sunsets, and then you're ready to move on to the next place and head up to the Grand Canyon or head up towards Flagstaff for a day or two, head over to Meteor Crater while you're at it, you know, that kind of stuff. But if you're looking to move there, we can make a video specifically about that, talking about housing prices, but home prices in Sedona are going to be, you know, they're up there. They're really... Uh, I'll just show you. $510,000 is the average medium home price up there. You got Village of Oak Creek, Munns Park. This area right here is really nice. See Cornville, Cottonwood, Clarkdale, there's Jerome. So you take the 89 all the way over to Jerome. Anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like the video. Drop a comment below asking for another video that you'd like me to make. Do you guys prefer when I talk to the camera or do these screen shares also let me know and I will see you guys next time.